Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Simply Unprofessional. I'm your host, Webby. Joining me tonight, we got Devin. Hey, everybody. How's it going? I'm Devin. And we got Rob. Hey, everybody. It's Rob. And obviously, with Rob, I hear uh, Matilda in the background as well. Yep, whining. Whining. Yep, she's whining. Going, she wants to go OUT. I don't know about that. Well, she's not here. She was in my face. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> Uh, so this week, everybody, uh, we didn't get a chance to last week due to varying circumstances from several of us, uh, listeners, you'll know, cause last week Rob was with, I believe he took Avalos on and did an episode, uh, cause I was in far too much pain to really move and Devin had some personal issues come up. So, but this week we spun it back around. We watched the new Matrix movie. I don't remember what it's called. Matrix Revelations or something? Re- no. Ma- uh, Matrix, not Revelations. Resurrection. Resurrection. Sure. It's the new Matrix movie. The newest so, Matrix. So we were going to, we watched that and then we're going to, we're going to talk about a little bit about this. So spoiler alerts, if you haven't seen it, uh, if you want to go see it, go ahead and then come back and listen to the episode then. Um, On HBO. HBO. On HBO now, go Max. Whatever. Max, Max, yep. that's the one. Uh, so, with that being said, spoilers moving forward. Uh, right off the bat, I don't know if you guys agree. I I feel like this was just the first Matrix movie redone with just slightly different plot points. Like instead of Neo being an IT guy, he was a game designer, and like I get like how it wasn't like the first movie, but there was a lot of similarities to the first movie. Um, honestly, that. it was honest, a lot like, of similarities like, to the movie. I think either, they played like, a lot to nostalgia. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, I love Keanu Reeves as an actor and as, as you know, as a person. He's a phenomenal person. Um, and I love the Matrix movies. I, you know, especially when they first came out, they were, you know, they were impactful. They were, they were something to watch. Uh, I found the myself, first one is the best of the three. I will agree to that. Or now four. Or now four, I should say. Um, I will admit, you know, whether it be from, you know, my discomfort not wanting to sit at my desk um, constantly because my shoulder right now or what, but I, I was finding myself kind of like not dozing off, but like zoning out through parts of that movie. Um, I will say... My favorite person, my favorite character in the whole movie, it, well, no, I might lie on that one, because I did like the little tiny robot that fist bumps the operator guy. <laughs> tiny robot that was like in two scenes. Yeah, he was literally just in two scenes. Uh, but I really like Bugs. I think Bugs is probably my favorite character in this in this movie adaptation, or, or not an adaptation, this, this version. Where is she? She get into stuff over there. I can't see it in the dark. Yeah, you. I'm looking at you. Don't look at me all guilty like that. Oh <laughs> yeah, run to dad. You know you did something wrong. No, she. Was, I said we go outside. She's like, why is he not following me? Uh, uh, um. Forget somebody else had a. I don't remember if it was in this movie or the other movie that we just watched because me. And, we watched the Shang Chi movie too. Fuck, I don't remember. Somebody had like a one word fucking line made me chuckle. I was like, hands down, that's the best part. I think that was in the Shang Chi movie though, huh? Rob? What? I don't remember now. God, I cannot focus literally on anything but this pain right now on my shoulder. <laughs> uh I liked the movie. I just don't think it was near it's it's to me it wasn't up there with the best of them. Um 
Devin, what's your opinion? Rob's not at his computer desk. He's letting Matilda out right now. What's my opinion on it? Yeah. Uh, what my was your take on, on the movie? My opinion on it in general, right at, as of now, is um, better than the third Matrix movie, but probably. Was the third one where they were hunting down the, the key dude and they had the two, like. The third one was the very, guys. like, the light. Yeah, no, that was, uh, I think the was second one. That, was that the it? second one? That was the second one. The, one with the two super the third blonde one, The people. third one was, like, where they were actually, like. They're in they're in Zion and they're having like the huge like war battle yeah. in Zion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it wasn't good. Yeah, so instead of being in Zion, they switched it over for another human human city called Io, but it was a human and sentience city because they don't like being called robots. So like they like being called sentience right. or something like that. Um. I, I I don't know. Like even with the end, like are there are there plans to make more, or are they ending it with this one? Uh they say there's right now. They they're leaving it with this one, but because I see how the ending that they did, they could have it, it. It could be a conclusion ending, or it could be you know it, it it does leave it open to be able to be expanded upon, I suppose. But. Yeah. Oh, Neo has a beard. Bugs is named after Bugs Bunny. She kicks ass. Uh, I don't know if you guys said it, but yeah, I mean, they kind of left it where this could be the end or if yeah. it does well at the box office. It's like, well, there's a lot of loose threads we could pull at. Yeah, that's what I just said. How the ending, they left it where it could be essentially just a self-contained film and be like, okay, well, that's, that's the button-up little ending for everybody. And or, like you said, if they do well, just keep milking the fucking Matrix cow. Because, mm-hmm. um, I mean, think about it. It, it. Very rarely do film industries nowadays, if they have a movie that's doing really well, will they just end it because it makes sense for the story. And this this goes with TV shows, I find, a lot, too. Um if you if you if you've reached the end of a TV show and you find the you know a good enough ending and you write it off and then you end the show, if there's enough demand for it, they'll just remake it. They'll continue it on. They'll you know sign it for another season or another trilogy or whatever uh, because it's it's all about money, man. It's all it's all anybody cares about apparently. Um. <sighs> I remember the one line that you laughed at. It was the older son. I was like, you trying to ball my mom or what? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, Rob, what was your initial thought, you know, you know, going into this movie and then having now seen it? Um, I mean, it was all right. I, I, didn't, I liked it. Um, if not better than the first one. I'd say it's probably on par with the second one. The third one was kind of crap, so I'd say it's like one, two, and four, and then three. Okay. Is that where you're... I know, Devin, you said that it was better than the third one. Is that how you'd rank it? Yeah, that's about the same. One one is, one is, I think, miles ahead of the other, all the other ones. Right. But one, uh, then I would put two, then I would probably put this one, and then I would put uh, three. I will, although I will say, with that being said, I do feel, in the grand scheme of the Matrix, this movie was very pointless. Like, yeah. I don't see a reason for this movie to really ex- have existed outside of the fact that it was just a revisiting of the Matrix. Like, and, th- and that was it. Like, I, I really didn't see a need for, like, I would have liked to see more things happening in the Matrix world. Without necessarily like can, they wanted to continue the Matrix, like all the stuff that they said happened after, uh, like Neo disappeared. You know what I mean? Right. I would have liked to have seen like all of that go down. Where right. like you have, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that would have been a much cooler, I think, a cooler thing, uh, and been like different and had more opportunity for like future movies and things like that. Because I think like, this ain't bad. It's not a bad movie. I just really there, it was kind of just a pointless movie, like. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, it even started off with 
Bugs essentially revisiting and watching I forgot what they called it, like a module or something like that. A module. Uh, they, a modal. Modal. Oh, yeah. modal. Um, of a scene that happens with Trinity in the first movie. Uh, but it wasn't even Trinity who was... It wasn't even the actress who was played Trinity who was in this modal, either. It was weird. Well, yeah, it's because it was a program that Neo... <laughs> it was supposed to be a program that Neo had written, so... Basically, Bugs had gone into his program in the Matrix, like she was too, like it was Inception. Basically, she was inside a program inside the program, right. looking at what he had designed. I just don't get like why they wouldn't still be Trinity in that aspect. If well, because then they have a reason for Mobius not to look like or Morpheus not to look like Morpheus, because I mean, no I one guess. in there looked like they were supposed to. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of with Devin. Like, again, it wasn't a terrible movie. I I think I would have enjoyed it more if I was just comfortable. Um, but I I I do feel like the movie didn't need to have like didn't need to happen. Like, mm. it was it there wasn't a point. Like, it, there were other things that I think would have made a more compelling story in the Matrix verse. You know. But literally, you, you we start off like that, and then it's instantly trying to, again, get Neo out of his egg thing uh, as fast as possible. Like, that's it, it felt like the same pacing almost as the first movie. Uh, like, it just jumps right into trying to get Neo out of the Matrix and into the real world, and then this, that, and the other thing. But... I don't know. I don't really have a whole lot to say about this movie now that I think about it. Uh, who was your favorite character, Devin? My favorite character out of those, out of the, out of this new one. Um, honestly, like my favorite character, I probably would have to say just because of this, like pure screen time. I probably would have to say is Bugs. Yeah. Just from the screen time she had, but the character I really would have liked to see like get stretched out more was like the new the new Smith. Um, I did oh, kind of like the like boss him or when whatever. He was, yeah, like when he was like on screen, I didn't really like him on screen a lot. Um, but he just really wasn't straight. Really, you know, like really stretched out or really like fleshed out, fleshed out. That's what I look for. But really fleshed out as much as I would have liked. Yeah. To like really like be like oh okay. They really honestly didn't do a whole lot with the new Morpheus either. He, no, well, Morpheus I mean, came. He, he he got him in the bathroom, and then he did that little dojo fucking fight scene like they did in the first movie, and then he was really just kind of a backup like character. Like he didn't. I don't know. He was supposed to know everything about Neo or whatever, and right. I don't know. Like they just didn't touch upon it. I guess. Like he was there just to get Neo to want to like be able to fight back. I guess in the little dojo scene. But... Well, I mean, he went up the thing to save Trinity. Is like the the sand guy. No, I thought that was a different guy. No, that was that was Morpheus. Oh, I thought that was the other dude that they introduced that was fucking... The one in the botany for the place? No, 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 because no, was... there was another dude that was made out of those little, like, ball, ball bearing robot there things. There was, yeah, there was no. another dude that was working with, like, the botanist lady, dude. There was that dude. No, 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 not the, bot- not, not the botany guy. I thought there was another one on the ship that wasn't Morpheus. No, that was Morpheus. Oh. He, yeah, that they, was Morpheus. he came out of the thing, and he's like, yeah. oh, how did you do this? This might sound real that racist. Was Morpheus. <laughs> this might sound real racist, and I apologize, but when he was in his, like, little ball bearing form thing, he looked like he had a completely different type of face. <laughs> like, I don't know, like, structurally, it wasn't the same. That's why I okay. think I got confused. The whole, the whole thing about the whole Morpheus thing is like that. It it was weird because that's that's it's the same Morpheus, but it's supposed to be, yeah. Well, no, it's well, supposed to be yes, part Morpheus, Morpheus and part Smith. Part Smith, it's yeah. Mor- 
Yeah, it's Morpheus is basically like his conscience like downloaded into a program and then like remanifest itself. That's kind of really what he is. Right, but you figure um, he'd have more like I don't know, like more reason to talk than he did. I don't know. Yeah. Like he wasn't I I, I pictured him being as main of a character as he was in the first movie almost. Yeah. Yeah, you know. I mean that's what I said. I feel like this movie, generally speaking, I feel like this movie is just kind of generally pointless. Uh, I I will say uh, it did score marks in the plus column for me having Neil Patrick Harris be the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, uh, <laughs> as much as I hate it because I, I I do enjoy her as an actress, uh, I'm pretty sure they had Christina Ricci in this movie and she was only in one scene. She was. I'm pretty sure she was the office lady, right? During like yeah, the office was. meeting or whatever, she was. Yeah, and that was it. That was all she <coughs> had in that entire movie. It's like here you get an office lady, you give two mm-hmm. rants, and that's it. I feel bad. <sighs> uh, so Rob, who is your favorite character then? I don't know. I didn't really get to see enough of them to have a favorite. Like they're all just kind of like blah. I guess Neil Patrick Harris is probably my favorite character. <laughs> I mean, fair. I, well, technically, he'd be mine too, but I was talking more so out of the new uh, good guy. Yeah, punch. that's kind of like the know. problem with this like, movie. Like, I feel like I feel like this movie accomplished nothing. Yeah, like, like yeah, yeah it, they didn't get to you. They like showed so many new characters, and then like some of the older characters are just like. You didn't get to really know what any of them were like. It's yeah. like, okay, well, you already kind of know what Neo and Trinity are like, but neither of them were yeah. ever my favorite characters, so <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, like, I don't know. I just feel like this movie, was it, it wasn't... I don't want to say this was a movie, movie was, like, the whole point of this movie was to, like, capitalize on Keanu Reeves' success. But well, I feel like this whole movie you was said it capitalizing best. Capitalizing Keanu Reeves' success. You said it best the week before last, Devin, when we were talking about sitting down to watch this movie. We are going to... We were gonna find out if this was a, a legit Matrix staple movie or if it was just a cash cow. And and honestly, after having watched it, I feel like they made it purely for the money. Yeah, I um, mean, I do think it opens up some interesting things. I th- them redoing this, I feel, opens up some interesting things. But I also feel like this could have probably been like this would have served better. Like, and it, it feels so weird saying that now. Like saying this, I say this for a lot of movies I watch now, but I feel like it's true. This movie would have been better served, especially because it released on HBO. It would have been better served as like a HBO, almost like a mini series. Mini series, yeah. Like give it like give it like a high budget like ten episode one like one ten episode season. Or like five episode season, give it like the five hours. I feel like this movie actually needed because like everything was just so quick. It was just like, yeah. and then the parts that weren't weren't really like the parts that needed to be like slower were super quick. The parts that didn't need to be that long were I feel like were too long in parts. It's not a bad movie. I feel like there's there's a there's a good movie in here. Um, but it, it what I got did not satisfy like did not make me excited for like future matrix things to come down the road. Also, can I just say that um Keanu Reeves plays somebody with the va- with variation of name of uh John or Johnny or Jonathan plays way too much like with like he 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 plays a lot of characters with that name. <laughs> well, and this one wasn't it Thomas or or something. I think it was Tom. But like you look at so you have John Wick. You go back to in Cyberpunk. He voiced Johnny Silverhand. Yeah. You go to I mean, yeah, obviously you got all the John Wick movies. I already said that. You jump to let's see what else we got here. Scrolling down his IMDb, I just feel like he plays a lot of like John or Johnny like in movies. In Generation Um, he played a character named John. Um, I I would have liked this movie if they had accidentally mixed up his mind with Johnny Silverhand somehow. He had some thumbs out of the Matrix. That would be funny. In Constantine, he plays John Constantine. <laughs> um, I mean, you can't forget the one and only Johnny Utah. Well, that's such a name. 
Um, he plays uh, Johnny Mnemonic. And then it, all their things, it's a T name. So this who is Tom, and uh, he was Ted and Bill and Ted. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> in, in 92, he played Jonathan Harker in Dracula. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like he, he, he has a habit of playing a lot of like John, Johnny, or Jonathan characters. But also, whoever wrote Point Point Break, I Johnny wonder. Utah, that's a terrible name. I wonder Johnny if any Utah of these movies. Terrible name. I wonder if any of these movies were written, and the character's name was different, and then they 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 casted Keanu Reeves, and he's like, okay, but can we change my character's name to John or, <laughs> or, or Johnny? I I just it I tend to react me. better being called that. <laughs> It you wouldn't know. surprise me. He's playing. He's in in a new show coming out uh, in Rain. It's called Rain. It's it sounds interesting. It's an assassin specializes in making his hits look like they've died from natural causes, starring Keanu Reeves. Called Rain. His character is named John Rain. Well. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Why are you always named John? <laughs> it's just because Keanu Reeves is like, you have to call me John, or I won't respond. I I forget. <laughs> People um, just call him John all the time, but Johnny Utah's a terrible man. I mean, his real name's Keanu. He's like, I want a regular name for yeah. my character. <laughs> I just want to be John. I just want to be John or Tom. <laughs> Come on now. Um, not Matrix related, but I started watching a show, Devin, that you had recommended to me a long, long time ago. What's the show? Letter Kenny. Oh, that show's great. Whatever. Like, yeah, I'm like four episodes in. I'm like. I, I don't know, like, I find myself shaking my head at the humor, but also chuckling because of just how dry it is. Letter Kid is great. It's, yeah, it's stupid, but it's great. It's like, it's, it's so Canadian. It's it a is. Canadian show. It is. It's so Canadian, but it's so good. <laughs> like, uh, they were, they were setting up a birthday party for their friend. It would like cupcakes and banners and hats and everything. And the brother and the sister were really getting into it, like decorating and whatnot. And then, like the brother had to go throw a beat down to some dude to prove that he was the strong, he was the toughest man in Letterkenny. Rob comes walking out. He's like, "Why is that guy with the cupcake beating up that other guy?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had a cupcake. He was beating up another guy, and then as soon as the other guy like fell on the ground, he's like, "You want to come to a birthday party?" <laughs> It's happening. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much that show in a nutshell. It's it's so <laughs> weird. <laughs> it's so weird. But yeah, the guy with a coat. And I just I love the big guy that they hang out with, because because oh, yeah. he he always says something to the sister. He's Dan? like he's like you know your folding skills. It's what I really appreciate about you. He's like, and then she's like, is that what you appreciate about me? And then the brother's always like, slow your roll. <laughs> <laughs> and then immediately as soon as he says that he just like starts looking at the ground or looking up at the sky <laughs> uh, it's it's yeah, I don't know it's an odd show but it is funny <laughs> I don't know it's it, like it it's is a, a, it's a super super dry humor though like it, it is I don't it even know like, category. it falls in the category of show it's like I find myself watching Letterkenny the most when I'm like at home with like hot cocoa on the couch with nothing to do. I just put it on and like stare at the TV. <laughs> and it's like, it's weird because like I'll put on a show like that. I'll usually find myself staring at my phone, usually with Letterkenny because it's such a dry hum- humor. I, you, I can't like just pick up on the humor from like by not looking at the screen. You know what I mean? Right. So I find myself just like looking at the screen the whole time. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's such a good show. It is pretty funny. Um, but okay. As far as the Matrix goes, I don't. We're only twenty five minutes into this episode, folks. I don't have much to say about the Matrix. Keanu Reeves was great. Bugs was great. Uh, I don't really care for the new Morpheus. Uh, there there was a gay man. character and he got to live. Actually, there were several. All of them got of, to live. No, there one was died. a lot of lesbians. Yeah, nobody, yeah, nobody died. Nobody died in this movie. Like, I was expecting, like, when they were chasing down during, like, the big assault, like, where all the people were jumping out of buildings and shit, I was like, okay, someone's gonna die here, because, you know, there's always that one a death. Chick, that one chick kind of almost died. Well, yeah, they all almost kind of died, but they all made it out. 
I do like the one guy's, like, I do question the one guy's. Also, by the way, can I just say, uh, my man Morpheus in the Matrix, excellent, excellent drip. Man's coming out with the yellow suit on. Oh, out of the bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was my great. Man's coming out, coming out with the yellow suit and stuff on. I do, appreciate, I, I do appreciate his dialogue where he's like trying to reenact the first scene where he offers the red pill and the blue pill. He's just like, inevitability, yada, 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 such and such, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but Yo. um, it's, it's, it's weird. It's like the movie like really like harkens on like nostalgia. And I think it's like this one. I feel like at parts of this movie, like I don't want to criticize it too hard because I feel like. At parts of this movie, they know the only reason you're watching this movie is off nostalgia because like, they like, they bring it up a couple times, like in that same scene. He's like, yeah. "Oh, to make this more comfortable for you," like he's like, it's like he's talking to Keanu, but I feel like he's talking to us to yeah. make this more comfortable for you. You know, <laughs> I figured we throw in a heavy a heavy dose of nostalgia. <laughs> and you're, you're sitting there, you're like, "Yeah, I mean, that's kind of it." Like if you were, I do almost feel like, like you said, I feel like they made this movie almost for the the demographic who was you know who who was real big into like yeah. the first matrix movie i think that's why they had the the thing where they were discussing the video game and they're all talking about what should we get in a four well we need lots of guns and blah blah, blah. they're like no the, the thing about the matrix is that it messed up your mind about like that whole discussion i think that was like <laughs> i'm like they, they probably recorded their actual talks about the freaking Matrix 4 and played them on there. Sometimes <laughs> I really sometimes I really feel like they think like there was this like a this was like a round table that made it into script. And there's been <laughs> I do feel like that occasionally. Like that and that scene felt like that in the um fuck what scene was it? Where he's uh God damn it that no, scene you know what we need that. you need you know what we need we need more of scene bullet where, time. Where they're talking about the scene where they're talking <laughs> about fucking uh, Warner Bros like demanding oh, yeah. demanding a sequel. <laughs> And I'm like, I, I really feel like you guys are just like, I, this movie feels like one of two things. Either like somebody really had a vision for this movie or like Warner Bros. walked in and was like, here's a stupid amount of money. Make the Matrix. Yeah. I mean, it only has one of the Wachowski, one of the Wachowski's Wachowski. attached to it. Yeah. It only has one of them attached to it. And that's why it was a half decent movie. Yeah, the only one, the only director is Lana. It does not have her brother. <clears throat> well, do you have closing thoughts probably. regarding the the Matrix Resurrection movie? Um, closing thoughts involving this movie. This is a serious question. Michael is probably going to cause an argument, not with you guys, but with some listeners, maybe. Well, what? My clo- my closing thought. Okay, uh, I want to say this. Um, I if you if you're a fan of the Matrix movies, I definitely think it's worth watching. It's not a bad movie. It's just don't go into it expecting. Kind of don't go in it. Don't go into weird. it expecting anything. Yeah, I mean, but at the same time, like, see, this I feel like this movie, like, I feel like this movie kind of stabbed me at the same time. Like, I feel like this movie, like, reopened my interest to the world of the Matrix, but didn't really deliver on it. So now I'm just kind of left with the big gaping wound again. You know what I mean? Yeah. That makes sense. Like, the Matrix is such a cool place, and it's a cool, like, idea. But I feel like this movie, like, got halfway there. It got, got enough there to, like, interest me. But didn't like complete complete the bridge, so I do th- I do feel like you know that's right. kind of it. So just don't go into it expecting anything, and y- you should be okay. What about you, Rob? Do you have any closing thoughts regarding the Matrix? I mean, like I said, you don't really get to know any of the new characters very well. Kind of like ah, uh... <laughs> it's okay. I mean, watch it if you really like the first Matrix movie. It's not as good, but you'll be like, oh, hey, Matrix, yay. But the story's not really very interesting. <laughs> uh, my closing thoughts, again, I feel like this is going to... 
some listeners are going to take this the wrong way and confront me about this, maybe. Uh, but I'm going to steal a line from my buddy Dean Winchester, and I'm going to say, Matrix, Resurrections, what's dead should stay dead. That's mm-hmm. all I got to say. They should have ended it with the third one, just not done a fourth one. They really could have. I probably ended, they could have yeah, truly they could have ended it with the first one if I mean completely wrong. Yeah, I mean the other ones aren't two and three aren't bad. They're just not substantially not nearly and, as good as. And again, one. I'm I'm not saying that this movie was bad because I mean no, it kept not. my it attention. Wasn't a bad movie at it all. had good action scenes, like the fight scenes and stuff were cool. Um, but. It just didn't need to happen. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I still think, yeah, like what Rob said, if you're a fan of the first movie, go see this one. But just don't have any expectations. Uh, don't go watching this movie hoping for a good story hook that drives you further into this Matrix world. Because uh, you don't get that. You do not. Okay. With that being said, we're a half hour in. Is there anything else that you guys would like to talk about? Or are we going to make this a short episode? Oh. <sighs> well, let's think for a second. One Mississippi. Would you guys... <laughs> One oh, shit. to do, maybe not, not obviously not today because we can't do it tonight. <laughs> do you maybe want to do next week if I can get these stuff together, or sometime in the next coming episodes? Do you guys want to do maybe an anime episode again? Where I, I'll give you guys some animes to watch, and we can. Um, sure, I here. mean, hopefully the ones that you pick out for us are. Either on Netflix, on Hulu, or can be found on our little website that me and you use. I mean, if I, honestly, if I was going to pick them, I'd pick them probably off of Netflix, Hulu, or even like HBO Max or something like that. Well, I don't have access to the HBO Max. Well, I mean, I need I can give you my HBO Max. I have it, in, or we can just watch them. And but yeah, I can give it to you. But yeah, yeah I mean, I'm fine. I mean, it's been a while since we've done a, an anime episode. True. So, I'm I'm curious to see if if you still got it and being able to find animes that I'm interested in or can maintain a hold of my interest long enough to watch them. Oh yeah. So probably not. I'm gonna fail. Rob, you got anything you want to say? I'm not gonna lie. I'm ready to end the end the episode. I'm in so much pain. (laughs) I I can hear it in your voice. Uh. I can quickly run down some of the scientific, for my Get Real with Rob, some of the scientific breakthroughs of last year. Hey, not to mention, we missed it. I know it currently recently happened, but like a bunch of the planets and the moon and shit were all aligned, right? Mm Mm-hmm. How long ago was that? I don't know. I know it was like the past couple weeks or something. Anyway, uh, yeah, if you want, you go ahead. I'm not going to say no to you. You're going to talk about science stuff from the whole year? Well, a couple of things that were really interesting that happened this year. I found an article that covers right. a couple interesting you, things. You, it's just a couple you, sentences for each one. So you got, you got a top five. That's what you get. Uh, okay. How many are there? Seven, eight. Yeah, that's fine. Go through. All right, fusion of the future. Hopes for making nuclear fusion the clean energy source of the future got a boost in August when the fusion experiment released 1.3 million joules of energy, a big hurdle of fusion energy to be achieved. Uh, The point at which fusion reaches production, more energy than required to trigger it. Uh, The test released about 70% of energy used to set off the reaction, the closest yet to a breakthrough of this milestone. So pretty soon we might be able to create a ton of energy by using energy, which will, because normally we need something else to create energy, which is like burning fuel or whatever. But this is actually using energy to create more energy, which will be pretty cool because you then you think, don't need other sources of energy. Do you think that will mm-hmm. happen in our lifetime? 
Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Like I said, this, this they're saying this is a big breakthrough towards it. So okay. So now, it, say hypothetically, if that did happen in our lifetime, you know mm-hmm. the government's going to regulate it and still have to make us pay for it. Some oh fashion. yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, do you think ultimately that's going to end up being more than, like, say, an electric bill or less than an electric bill? It should be less. Should be. But, I mean, other if it's more than an electric bill, why do it? <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, that's true. Uh, hey, so the second one, first pig to human kidney transplant. In a first, the pig kidney was attached to a human and the organ function normally during 54 hours of monitoring. This successful surgery experiment marks a milestone towards true animal to human transplant, which will broaden the supply of life-saving organs for people in need. Honestly, I don't know why they hadn't tried this sooner, because they know that the similarities between pigs and humans are as close as they are. Uh, I mean, well, they probably have tried it before, but this was the first successful one. Oh. <laughs> um, Death Stars. In a bone-chilling event, astronomers caught a star swallowing a nearby black hole, or it could be, or perhaps a neutron star was getting eaten by its own metal. The result was a spectacular explosion that left behind a black hole. Astronomers have theorized that this such a star-eating supernova was possible, but this is the first one that has ever been observed. Living machines. Frog cells, frog cells transform themselves into tiny living robots. Scientists remove skin stem cells from frog embryos and watch the cells organize into little blobs they dub xenobots that could swim around and even repair themselves. Plus, they move particles in the environment. Xenobots might someday serve a useful purpose such as cleaning waterways, the scientists say. Hmm. <clears throat> brain teaser. Scientists got an entirely new view of the human brain when they took a tiny piece of a woman's brain and mapped the various shapes of 50,000 50, cells and their 100 million or so connections. This vast database will help unravel the complexities of the human brain. Uh, Pluses and minuses. People often add when subtracting is the way to go. Scientists found that after asking volunteers to tackle a variety of puzzles and problems, including stabilizing a Lego structure and optimizing a travel itinerary, uh, the tendency to think to add more things rather than subtract things could be the root of modern-day excess problems like cluttered homes and researchers speculate. Apparently, humans tend to Constantly add things when subtracting is the solution. Uh, potty training cows. Farmers Can farmers reduce pollution by sending cows to the loo? The answer might very well be yes. In a unique experiment, scientists train cows to answer nature's call by using a bathroom stall that gathers urine. In the future, collected cow urine, which could otherwise pollute the environment, might be able to be used to make fertilizer. And the last one, crystal clear. The intense heat and pressure of the first atomic bomb test in 1945 left behind a glassy substance known as uh, trinitite. And something even stranger, within the trinitite, scientists have discovered a rare form of matter called quasicrystals. Quasicrystals have ordinary structure like that of normal crystals, but the structure doesn't repeat as it does in a regular crystal. Previously, these crystals had only been found in meteorites. That's it. And we replicated that with an atomic bomb explosion? Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, let's just bomb more stuff to get more crystals. <laughs> I mean, I guess that would depend on what the quasi crystals do. <laughs> they help give you enough energy to sustain and <laughs> energy <laughs> using neuron stars and black holes. Okay. I don't know. Well, that's Cow-pee. the science corner. Those are the most interesting breakthroughs of 2021. One of them was cow pee. So that's how exciting yep. 2021 was. Cow pee. Here's looking for 2022, folks. <laughs> uh, Devin, do you have a life advice? Because that was just an entire science corner. I do have, I do have some life advice. Uh, if you happen to own a restaurant and you want to boost your a restaurant or bar and you want to boost your business, um, create a bunch of fake Tinder profiles of hot individuals and just swipe right on everybody. And then set up a first date and always send them to your restaurant and just stand them up because they don't exist. <laughs> but they're at least going to order some drinks and some food while they wait for their date to show up. So that's, a that's fucking a- genius. <laughs> that is 
Fuck it. I swear to God, that's somehow against the law. That's 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 <laughs> that's got to be somewhere. There's got to be a loophole for something like that. But that is fucking <coughs> genius. <laughs> Until like the th- like the fourth <coughs> girl at the bar is like, oh, why are you here tonight? It's like oh, I stood up. It's like, oh, we were too. Oh, really? On Tinder? Yeah, on Tinder. Blah blah blah. It's like, oh shit. <laughs> Just have just just if that happens, you just send out like a free round of beer and people drink and forget their problems. Yeah, true. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. All right, well, that's that's really good life advice. I want to go open a restaurant now, <laughs> purely on that um, format. Webby <laughs> nickname for Webby's restaurant is going to be like the Heartbreak. Yeah, the the Heartbreak Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> Sign on the front door. Stood up again. It's like, wait, stood up again. Why have we? This is where we're supposed to be meeting. I don't know if we're stood. I was stood up. Shit. How'd you know? <laughs> How'd you know? Everybody right. gets stood up when we come here. Well, we're gonna end there. So, where can people follow you on the internet, Rab? Then you can, you let can me follow me on Twitter at confessor underscore x and on Twitch at twitch.tv slash confessor. And where can people find you on the internet, Devin? You guys can find me on Twitter at DMP underscore Pookie and on Twitch at Mr. D3. And as always, you can find me on eBay at the Heartbreak Lounge. All right. Looking for my date that stood me up. Uh, as always, everybody, you guys can follow me on Twitter at Jack's Forest Walker, all one word, on Twitch at DM Webby. Uh, and on eBay at I Would Never Stand Up Devin at the Heartbreak oh. Lounge. Uh, and thank you everybody for listening sorry this is a short short short-ish episode it's over 40 minutes so that's good enough Uh, but we're all in lots of pain and the world sucks so I guess this is me telling you how to live with it (laughs) I'm just kidding we love you thank you for listening and fuck Booster Gold Booster Gold FBG 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 <sighs> oh, pain. Loud love. Da 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 da. I'm always off key singing the intro, outro song. Da 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 da. da.